Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Adam here with Retro Pairs and it's time for another video. So as you can see, I got some mail and I got a good idea about what this is, but um, I'm not 100% positive because I just bought a bunch of different things on Amazon. So let's, uh, let's open her up and see what we've got here. All right. Okay, so it is what I think it was. So, what is this you might be asking? As you can see, we've got uh, a whole bunch of parts, and a board, and some schematics. This is quite the diagram. Well, what this is, is a DIY oscilloscope. Um, so, basically what this is, it's um, a company has made kind of a low-cost, do-it-yourself oscilloscope. It's called a DSO-138 oscilloscope. Um, I'm not positive who actually manufactures it. It says Kumon here, but I've heard of a couple different manufacturers that make these. But I found this on um, Amazon. It cost about $25. So, for anyone that's ever looked at an oscilloscope on Amazon or eBay, um, as you know, they're very expensive. They can be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Um, obviously for 20 bucks, you can't expect really a ton, but um, I'm curious, what can you do with this? I wonder if this is gonna be usable to work on the stuff that I like to do. So the purpose of this video, I'm going to assemble this oscilloscope and try and test it out and see basically how it works, if it's going to be useful at all for any of the applications that I work with, and go from there. Um, I know due to popular demand, you might be hearing something, and that is Kona monging on a bowl, on a bone. Say hi, Kona. Yeah, she's just busy eating away. Okay, bye. I know it's been a couple videos since I featured her, so... Uh, um, I know a lot of you like her. So there you are. There's your Kona fix for at least now. She might return later. We'll see. So um, let's take a look at this board here. So as you can see, it's pretty much empty. Um, this is a DIY kit, as I had said already. So you're expected to solder all of this together yourself. So clearly, very clearly, you need some soldering abilities. Um, this particular version, they've already soldered on all the surface mount stuff. So you see all these resistors already in place here and these uh, these chips here. So that helps to speed up the process or if maybe you don't have the equipment or the technique to do something like this. Like that's a pretty fine pitch um, IC. So definitely understandable if you don't trust yourself to solder that on. That's why they make these versions. Um, they do make a version where it's... Uh, completely blank. They send you the chips, they send you the resistors like that. You got to break them open and uh, solder them on yourself. And if you don't really have very good surface mount soldering skills, then you might run into trouble. So um, being that I live in Canada, my options were pretty limited on Amazon. They really just had this or a fully assembled version where you don't solder anything on. And I thought that was kind of boring because, well, as you know, if you've watched my channel, I like to solder things. I like to kind of tinker around, and it doesn't make for a very good video if I can't do that. So let's um, let's get started. Take a look at the parts and everything that comes with this. So what we've got here are a couple probes. So they sent a um, it's the connector here at the end. It looks like a couple alligator clips. So pretty simple set of probes. It'd be nice if maybe they had a probe that was pointed so that you could pick on certain pins in a circuit, but um, you may have to improvise here. And in cases like that, it might even be as simple as just throwing on the leg of a resistor and touching it to where you need to touch it. But um, we'll, we'll get there once we actually solder this all together. So I'm gonna put that away. Um, this little package here, Looks like we have the display for this, so I just want to open her up and see what this looks like. So there we are. It's literally just a display. 
Um, whoever put this screen protector on really is not very good at screen protectors because that's a gigantic bubble. Maybe we can kind of work that out gently with your thumb. I mean, minimal effort made that better. So um, questionable quality control on the actual manufacturing here, but um, well, for spending 20, 25 bucks, I mean, you really can't expect the world. Um, I'm going to put a link to this in the description below through both Amazon.ca and .com where I bought this. I'm sure you can buy other versions on eBay or whatnot, but um, I'm just going to send you the one that I purchased. So let's move this to the side and let's take a look at the instruction booklet here. So they've sent actually two pieces of documentation. Here we have a schematic for this thing. So if you're curious as to how this actually works, um, this would be the way to go. So I'm not going to tell you what this all means, but you can see how these chips connect to the various circuitry here. Um, they show you how the buttons work and how to use. So a little bit of an instruction manual. So we're going to come back to this later once we get that actually assembled. But what I'm going to need to focus on right now is this. And this is the um, this is the assembly instructions, basically. So um, it's telling you right here all the parts that you're expected to have in this package. So the, they recommend when you take this part first, just make sure that everything is here. And as it noted here, always use, always meter resistor values before soldering. So um, you want to make sure that the resistors that are required are actually in this package. You can read the bands on them, but if you get them backwards or you misread one of the bands, say you think that yellow is white, which is, I mean, they're easy to misread. Um, you may wind up with the wrong value in the wrong place and you could run into issues. So it does a nice job of labeling what goes where, what the value is that goes in the particular spot. And again, for those of you who might not be too familiar with PCBs and everything, um, these R values, so R2, for example, it's going to be printed right on the board here. So there's R2 right there. And that's going to mean that this resistor is going to go right in this place. And that should be a 1.8 mega ohm resistor. And again, going through everything else here. So the chokes, the diodes, the crystal. So some of them should be pretty straightforward. Like obviously the USB socket's only going to be the one part. The resistors, the capacitors, those are going to be the tricky parts that you need to make sure that you're aware of. So the best thing to do to start from what I've seen when we people, some people actually assembling these is just open this up and start sorting your components. So let's dump this all out. And we're going to slowly kind of go through one by one and mark them off. I'm not going to record this whole process, but I just want to show you an idea of what I mean by this. So um, there we go. So there's a, the, some of the resistors here. So what I'm going to do first is separate these into various component types. And then from there, we're going to determine which ones uh, go in which place. All right. So what I've done here is I've separated all the parts into various types of components. And what I mean by that, so we have our, like, for example, the ceramic capacitors are over here, the electrolytic capacitors are together, the resistors, the transistors, um, any of the sockets and headers, any various connectors, switches, and so on and so forth. Um, so now that I have those somewhat identified, um, I want to look at this chart, well, not chart, but list, and find the obvious things. So for example, LED, there's one LED, clearly that's an LED and that's the only one LED that matches here. So that's included. We're going to check that off and I'm going to put this back in the bag. And I'm going to do that for everything else that's fairly obvious that I think anyway. So for example, again, power inductor, there's one power inductor right here, L2, I'm going to throw that in the bag. One crystal, throw that in the bag, mark it off. So I'm going to go and do that for all the very 
obvious things. And then we're going to go back to the ones that require actual um, reading of values. So the resistors, the capacitors, and so on. Now, one thing to be aware of, these transistors and regulators. So it even tells you right on the instructions here, attention, packages are similar, do not mix up. So this is what they look like. These are both the transistors and the regulators. And as you can tell, the packages are nearly identical. There's really no discernible difference, um, except for the leg length. The leg length is a little shorter on one of them. So let's see which is which. See if we can read this here on the camera. Not really. Well, there we go. S9014C331. 9014. So this is a transistor. So does that mean that the other short one is a transistor? Let's mark that off. 9014 is good. And let's check out this one. 8550. There you go. And 8550 is that other transistor right there. Cool. So transistors are good. Once again, I'm going to throw them in the baggie. So last kind of obvious part of these diodes. And once again, I don't know if you're going to make these out. There we go. N4004. So one N4004 there. So this one's good. I need to make sure this one's a one N4004. 5819. There we go. 1N5819. Good. So the diodes are also good. So that leaves us with the remaining components here, which are the electrolytic capacitors, the resistors, and the ceramic capacitors. So looking at the list here, as you can see, there are a lot of resistors and it even tells you at the top, always measure resistor values before soldering. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure these values and I'm gonna try and group them based on the size. So the ones that I have two or three of the same size, I'm gonna tape them together just so that I know um, which ones are which. The ceramic capacitors, um, I'm going to do the same thing. These ones that are 0.1 microfarad capacitors, I'm just going to group them all together. I might put them in a separate baggie, actually, just so that um, I don't have to keep measuring them or trying to read them. And the electrolytic capacitors should be pretty straightforward up at the top here. It, it writes the values directly on here. So, for example, 100 microfarad. Um, they're all supposed to be 100 microfarad. So I guess we just make sure there's six of them. There's one, there's two, three, four, five, and six. So those are all good. Those are actually just going to go right in the baggie. Because again, there's no different values, so it's not going to be possible to mix those up. So I'm going to separate these electro or uh, not electrolytic uh, ceramic capacitors, and we will go from there. All right, so ceramic capacitors are also good, and I'm just going to show you how I've laid them out here. So the differing values, I've grouped them, and I've put them in the same order as it's listed here on the board. So. For example, C2, 330 picofarads, that's going to be this one right here, which reads 331 on it. So I'm going to give you a very brief overview on how to read values on these capacitors. So using this same one as an example, let's get, there we go, 331. What that means is when there's three digits, the first two digits are going to translate directly here. So 33. And then the third digit, which was one, is going to reference the number of zeros in the in the reading. So, and that's going to be in picofarads. So, in this case, it's 330 picofarads. Um, going to this guy as an example, which reads 104. 
and that's these 0.1 microfarad capacitors. Um, so that's going to read 104, which means 10 plus four zeros, which is 100,000 picofarads or 100 nanofarads or 0.1 microfarads. So um, anything with less than two di three digits, such as these, 22, just directly translates to 22. Same with these three and these one. So that's how you can read those and differentiate between them. So I've separated them off to the side here. It's kind of slightly out of my work area, so I can just grab them as necessary. And the last part is going to be these resistors. So I need to measure them, make sure that I have everything that I need. So just going to show you an example of how I'm organizing these resistors. Um, so I'm following the, the order here on this chart. And as you can see, they follow in an order. So R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, and they have various values. So what I've done here on my, um, my work mat, each of these squares, oh crap, let's put that back. Each of these squares, I've written a number which corresponds to the order here. And as I measure these resistors, I'm gonna put them in the corresponding spot. So I'm gonna use this as an example, measuring it in the, let's zoom in a touch. Measuring it in the 600 kilo ohm range, 198.7, which is going to be within spec for 200 kilo ohms. And based on this here, that should go in R3. It's a little fuzzy on the camera, but let's just stick it right there on three. All right, so I verified that all the resistors are there. And I've separated them, let's move this over, into their various types. I know it's not the neatest way to do it, but um, as long as I don't disturb those, they're good. I am going to measure them before I put them into circuits. So this is just for organizational purposes. So now that I've got everything verified that it's in this package, um, basically just follow the instructions. Step one, assembly main board and LCB, LCD board, follow the order as numbered. Um, so starting with resistors, then chokes, then diodes, and so on and so forth. So i um, going to start with R1, 14, and 16, but work my way through the board. Um, go all the way through these steps until we're done and we are ready to test. So going to gonna just go ahead, power through a lot of this. If there's something worth describing, I will. If not, then um, this is pretty much going to be a soldering video. Um, couple things I do want to note. Um, it is a good idea to use flux for applications such as this. Um, even though they are through hole soldering, they are still, there's some pretty small components here. So the flux really helps to avoid solder bridging and really get the solder going where you want it to go on this board. So I use a flux pen. And for those of you who have asked in the past, this is an MG Chemicals rosin flux pen. I like to use rosin flux don't use no clean no clean is not meant for these purposes no clean is meant for when you're doing using a reflow oven and you're going to heat up that whole board otherwise if you have unspent no clean or flux on your board it is more corrosive than rosin flux is so just don't you don't need to use it get some rosin flux it's going to leave a little bit more of a mess at the end just clean it up with a toothbrush it's really simple so i'm going to go straight ahead and get right into this So I want to just quickly show you the strategy when you're doing a bunch of soldering like this. So I've installed, well, not fully installed, but I've put five of these resistors in place. And there's one thing I do want to note. So we've put them through the board and I've bent the legs out at about 45 or a little bit more of an angle. And that just holds them into place. Um, so I'm going to go and apply some flux to all of these connections, just like so. Um, and then gonna just kind of here, there we go. I'm going to grab my soldering iron. So 
what I want to do here is I'm going to actually focus on just one of each of the legs. So these small components, they can be prone to heat. And to make sure that you're not um, overheating them at all, just do one of the legs, move on to the next one, move on to the next one, just to let them cool down a bit. And then you can go back and do the other legs. So I'm going to start up here. soldered that one together but that's okay okay so I've got one leg of each of these installed I'm gonna go back do the other leg okay now that I've got all of those installed, I'm just gonna give them a quick once over, make sure I haven't missed anything, make sure that those look like some clean solder joints. And I'm just gonna go through and cut them flush. Um, good idea to hang on to these legs. Um, they can be used for jumpers. Um, there's actually one case in this installation where you do need a leg, so it's good to hang on to that just in case. Okay, so those five resistors are now installed, so time to continue on and finish the rest of them. So I'm having a bit of a brain fart here, and I want to explain to you what's going on. So I want to go measure my resistors here, and this particular one, R4, should be 2 mega ohms. And I'm getting values jumping all over. <clears throat> you can't measure resistors in a circuit. You have to pull them out of the circuit to measure them. Now when I measure, make that measurement, I get a pretty consistent... Come on. Let's get a good grab there. No, I'm not. That's interesting. Let's just put them down. There we go, two ohms. The thing is it was going through various other components here and it was throwing off the values. When I was holding it in my hand, it was then taking into account the resistance of my skin and everything. So you need to measure them out of circuit before you put them in. So I'm gonna do that quickly for all these ones I just put in, but um, going forward, going to make sure you measure them before you put them on.
So we've made it so far and most of the board is now populated. So you see we've got all the capacitors, electrolytics, the ceramics, all the resistors, the chokes, the trim pots. Um, the buttons are in, the switches are not. A couple other things are not in. Um, but also these headers are not in. So I have found that there is a little trick to getting these lined up. And what I mean by that, so I'm going to show you an example here. Um, these headers are going to go into J7 and J6, 8. But as you can see, they're pretty easy to move. So if I were to solder it in slightly crooked like that, um, it's going to be difficult to attach the screen after the fact. So I'm going to show you what it is that I'm going to do in order to make this line up properly. Okay, so what I've done here, I've kind of skipped ahead to, um, this is actually step 22 on the instructions, but it shows how the LCB, LCD board should be assembled. So I'm going to get my mail headers here. I'm going to trim them so that I have two sets of two. And I'm just going to sit them in place. I'm not going to solder them in yet. Perfect. I'm going to get my male, I believe this is a 20 pin. Yep. And again, I'm just going to sit it in place just like so. I'm going to get the female connectors, and attach them to the male ones so that they're already connected and I don't have to guess how they need to be aligned. So it's just going to make it a little bit easier. There we go. So now that those are connected, let's get these assembled. So the female header goes on the main part of the board here. So I'm just going to flip these over. And then going to line up the LCD board. Just like so. So now that that's lined up the way that I need it to be, everything's attached, I'm going to flip it over and solder it into place. And this makes sure that everything's going to be aligned properly, it's not going to be crooked, and I'm not going to have issues attaching this later. So now that the back side of that's soldered into place, we're going to flip it over. This should lift up very easily with these headers still attached. But the thing is, I don't want these headers just sticking out here um, because those are going to be easy to knock off and break. So we're going to solder it to this board and then we're going to lift this whole board right off. All right, so now with all of the components installed, um, we're ready to test this. So let's uh, plug this in. So we just need a DC power supply. I'm gonna plug it in and follow the directions here. Um, you notice I have the screen not installed and that's on purpose. So the first steps here and apply nine volt power to J10, which is the power jack. Check voltage at TP22. It should be around 3.3 volts. So we're gonna stick this to DC and TP22. So we'll get ground off the housing of this. Three point one two. That's pretty close. Four point eight. I would feel 3.12 is close enough to 3.3. 3. 
So let's disconnect the power and short JP4. So just as I did with the previous jumper here, we're just going to jump, where is it? Uh, JP4 right there. And to do that, just going to heat it up. I'm going to get a good angle at this. should do the trick. So now that that's done, we should be able to plug this board in and hopefully boot this up. So I believe you just plug it in and it turns itself on. Let's see what happens. Okay, so far so good. All right, um, that looks promising. Looks like an oscilloscope. So I think we'll uh, we'll try and do a few tests here and see kind of how this works and if it's going to be, I mean, usable for what I do. Um, I know the range on this isn't very great, so let's make sure some of these buttons actually do anything. So it seems to cycle through options. Not sure what that does. I don't know what that does. Oh, this switches from running to hold. Reset. Let's see, ground, AC, DC. Okay, so this switch works. One volt, 0.5 volts, 50 millivolts. Okay, so that's good. Times five, times two, times one. Okay, so these work. We need to determine if these switches are actually doing anything, but um, um, I'm going to get a few things to test this on, and I think that'll give us a good indication of how this really works. All right, so I've got this set up in the test mode. I'm just going to show you a little bit of an example of what this does. So on the top here, you can specify the type of input that you're looking at, and it changes the um, how it's going to look. So between you can set it straight to ground. Um, if you're looking at an AC or DC source, and you can adjust it a little bit, um, this one will change the scale. And depending on what you're looking at, you find that it might start jumping around a little bit. Um, again, it's not a great, it's not a really good oscilloscope. Good ones, they're going to be able to kind of stop this jumping from happening, and it's going to be a cleaner waveform. Oh, what's going on here? There we go. And you can zoom in and out. Um, you can change also uh, the scale here. So at the bottom here, it's looking at uh, 0 0.2 milliseconds. So we can select that. Oh, come on. And I can decrease or increase that. So 0 0.1 millisecond, 50 microseconds. You can go all the way up to... 10, 20, 50 milliseconds, two seconds, so on and so forth. So, and this is registering, it tells you the voltage you're looking at, 1.1 volt. This is just feeding off the test input at the top here. Um, so anyways, there's just a bunch of different things you can kind of do with this. Let's go back to where I was, which was point, oh, oh. Point 0.2 milliseconds. All right, um, you can have it hold so that it's not going to keep refreshing and it just holds that for you. Um, we can select, we can move the wave so we can go back and forth. And this is going to be useful to look at how voltage might change over time. So if you're looking at a capacitor discharging or something like that, 
Um, that's where that would come in handy. So I'm going to try and set up a couple examples here that might be a little more relevant to some of the work that I do and see if it's going to work at all for that. So one other example I want to illustrate is how this can be used to uh, take a look and visualize something that I work with a little more. And in this case, that's going to be the uh, AC power supply for an NES. So as you can see here, we have a sine wave. It's got AC power going through it. Um, and I've just connected directly to it. Now, one thing that you can do um, is you can visualize the effect that different components are going to have on a circuit like this. So I want to show you a very small little circuit that I'm going to build using just a diode at the bottom here and a resistor here. So um, just give me a second to construct this. Okay, so what I've done here is done what's called basically a half wave rectifier. And this has used the diode to remove the bottom portion of this graph um, so that we're only having positive voltage. The voltage is only going one way through that diode. Um, so this is somewhat a way to turn AC voltage into DC voltage. Now, I haven't done exactly that yet because I don't have the full circuitry in place. You, normally, you'd use something like a capacitor. Um, to really smooth that out to, to reduce the ripples, which is where ripple current comes from, if you've heard of that. Um, but this is a one way to smooth out AC voltage and make it something that a DC power or DC uh, board can handle. Um, I'm not really going to do too much with this right now, but I just wanted to illustrate um, that it does in fact seem to work. It seems to be able to handle the voltage that the AC power supply is giving out. So, I mean, it's not all bad. Um, Obviously, there aren't as many functions and features with this little oscilloscope here as a full-featured one that you get for several hundred dollars would be, but, I mean, for 20 bucks, can't go wrong. It's definitely, I think, a handy tool to have in your arsenal if you only have a few bucks to put towards an oscilloscope, and it was an interesting little uh, project to work on as well. Um, I think I'm overheating this resistor that I've connected it to. This is only a quarter-watt resistor, and I think putting out 9 volts at probably an amp is a bit much for it but um it's oh yeah that's pretty hot come on there we go but anyway so yeah that's just a very brief overview about how an oscilloscope kind of works a um, couple of uh, things that you can do with it if you're interested to know more about oscilloscopes definitely check out youtube there's tons of videos and tutorials about that but that's going to be it for this video I want to thank you for watching leave me a comment below let me know your thoughts um, be sure to check out my channel subscribe to the channel hit that bell so you get notifications of every video that i put out um, so thanks a lot for watching until next time thanks a lot we'll see you next video